so good morning to all so in today's lecture of ev testing and standards we are going to in the last lecture we have already seen the basic fundamentals and the requirements the necessity advantage disadvantage scope and different types of uh, electric vehicles like hybrid electric vehicles in that we have seen series parallel hybrid okay and the combination of both so today we are going to see the different technologies emerging in the energy storages okay of electric vehicles so firstly we all know that energy storages are maybe can be defined as the devices that store energy deliver energy outside and accept energy from inside i accept energy from outside okay so there are several types of energy storage that have been proposed for electric vehicle and hybrid electric vehicle applications so these energy storages so far include chemical batteries ultra capacitors or super capacitors and ultra high speed flywheels okay so there are number of requirements for energy storage applied in the automotive applications such as specific energy specific power efficiency maintenance requirement management cost environmental adaptation and friendliness and also safety so for allocation on a electric vehicle specific energy is the first consideration since it will limit the vehicle range so on the other hand for hybrid electric vehicle applications specific energy becomes less important and specific power is the first consideration because all the energy is from the energy source that is engine or fuel cell and sufficient power is needed to ensure the vehicle performance particularly during acceleration hill climbing and regenerative braking so other requirements should be fully considered in electrical vehicle drive trend development okay so first of all we are going to have a look on this electromechanical electro sorry electrochemical batteries so in this case electrochemical batteries more commonly called as batteries are electrochemical devices that convert electrical energy into potential chemical energy during charging and okay during charging and it converts electric energy and it converts chemical energy into electric energy during discharging okay we know this thing so battery is nothing but it is composed of several cells okay stacked together so a cell is an independent or a complete unit that possesses all the electrochemical properties so basically a battery cell consists of three elements first in that two electrodes which one in that first one is positive second one is negative which are immersed into the electrolyte okay so battery manufacturers usually specify the battery capacity in ampere hour so which is designed which is defined as the number of ampere hour gained when discharging the battery from a fully charged state until the terminal voltage drops to its cut off voltage also it should be noted that same battery usually has a different number of ampere hour at different discharging current rates okay another important parameter for a battery is the state of charge i think you have heard it in your battery management system chapter uh, syllabus so state of charge is defined as the ratio of remaining capacity to the fully charged capacity so uh, when we go in deep with this definition a fully charged battery has an state of charge of 100% and a fully discharged battery has 
state of charge of 0% ok so you can I will scroll down here you can see electromechanic electrochemical batteries this is state of charge this is what a typical electrochemical battery cell ok negative positive electrodes electrolytes immigration of ion and electrons ok so you can see here cutoff voltage of a typical battery ok so discharging time and cell voltage so as the time increases the cell voltage decreases ok and this is your cutoff voltage for the battery so SOC as given here state of charge is given by this formula ok current and charge where this Q of I is amp power capacity of the battery at current rate I dt so for discharging I should be positive and for charging I is should be negative so we can finally we can say that SOC means state of charge of a battery can be expressed as SOC equals to SOC naught minus integration of current and charge ok change in current and charge so where this SOC underscore 0 is the initial value of the SOC which is 0 finally is 100 ok now you have already know about this electrochemical reactions and all that we will go further we will go to the main point, point. this is battery circuit model ok this is the supply one variable register and this is your load now energy efficiency so the energy or power loss during battery charging and discharging appear in the form of voltage loss ok so efficiency of a battery during discharging and charging can be defined at any operating point as the ratio of V upon VO that is the cell operating voltage to the thermodynamic voltage ok V0 is thermodynamic voltage and V is state operating voltage ok so for during discharge it is like an efficiency equal to V upon V0 and during discharging it is efficiency equal to V0 upon V so this terminal voltage as a function of battery current and energy stored in it or SOC is lower in discharging ok and higher in case of charging ok this is what and high temperature would damage the battery so now we are going to see our main thing the battery technologies ok so different electric vehicles and hybrid electric vehicles consist of uh, lead acid batteries ok then uh, nickel based batteries such as nickel or iron nickel or cadmium and nickel metal hybrid batteries ok also lithium based batteries such as lithium polymer and lithium ion batteries so in near terms it seems that a lead acid batteries will still be a major type due to its many advantages ok it is more common because of many advantages so in the long and middle term we can see that the cadmium and lithium based batteries will be major candidates for electric vehicles and hybrid electric vehicles so there are different technologies which are developing for this cadmium and lithium based batteries ok so you can see here this graph shows the typical battery charge and discharge efficiency so in the x-axis your state of charge is there 
y axis efficiency is there okay so as the state of charge is less efficiency is also less okay as it is increasing so for charging you can see this is for charging for charging at minimum soc efficiency is very high and as the soc increases charging or efficiency decreases for the discharging it is inversely proportional okay now lead acid batteries okay we are going to have a look on lead acid batteries so basically it is a successful uh, commercial product for over a century and it is widely used as an electrical storage in the automotive field and other applications okay so advantages are low cost mature technology relative high power capability and good cycle so these advantages will attract for its application in hybrid electric vehicles where high power is the first consideration so the materials involved are lead lead oxide sulfuric acid etc are low in cost as compared to their more advanced counterparts okay opposite opponents so lead acid batteries also have several disadvantages the first is the energy density of lead acid battery is low this is mostly because of high molecular weight of lead okay the temperature characteristics are poor of lead acid batteries so below 10 degrees celsius its specific power and specific energy are reduced so this aspect okay reduction in the specific energy affects several limits okay and the applications of lead acid batteries for the traction of vehicles operating in cold climates okay in cold climates lead acid batteries are not that efficient okay it has this advantages because of less specific energy also the as we have seen this is sulfuric acid present in lead acid battery so the presence of highly corrosive sulfuric acid is a potential safety hazard for vehicle occupants okay so hydrogen released by the self discharge reactions is another potential danger for the lead acid batteries since the gas is extremely flammable even in tiny concentrations so when there is a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen there will be a production of flame so hydrogen emission is also a problem for hermetically sealed batteries so in order to provide a good level of protection against acid spills it is necessary to seal the battery okay so as a result pressure may build up in the battery because of sealing and that may cause swelling and mechanical constraints on the casing and sealing okay so different lead acid batteries with improved performance are being developed for electric vehicles and hybrid electric vehicles so improvements like sealed lead acid batteries in specific energy over 40 watt hour per kilogram with the possibility of a rapid charge okay these are been done so one of these advanced sealed lead acid batteries is electrosource horizon battery okay so this will adopt the lead wire woven horizontal plate and hence it offers the competitive advantages of high specific energy which is 43 watt hour per kg okay then high specific power 25 watt per kg and long life cycle over 600 cycles for on road ev application also rapid recharge like fast charging capabilities which is 50% capacity in 8 minute around 100% in less than 30 minute okay this is very high like a 55 watt fast charger for your mobile also low cost so advanced lead acid batteries have been developed to remedy this disadvantages okay about disadvantages in cold climates the specific energy has been increased through the reduction of inactive materials such as the casing current collector separators etc 
so because of this life time has been increased by over 50% so at the expense of cost however okay now second one is nickel based batteries okay as we know that nickel nickel is a lighter metal than lead and has very good electrochemical properties which are desirable for battery applications so there are four different nickel based battery technologies first one is nickel iron then nickel zinc then nickel cadmium and lastly nickel metal hydride okay there are four technologies so nickel or iron system so it was commercialized during the early years of 20th century okay applications like forklift trucks mine locomotives shuttle vehicles railway locomotives and motorized hand trucks these are the applications of nickel or iron system so the system comprises of a nickel which is this one nickel 3 and hydro hydroxy oxide nioh the so positive electrode and a metallic iron negative electrode okay the electrolyte is a concentrated solution of potassium hydroxide which is 240 g per liter containing lithium hydroxide which is 50 g per liter so the cell reaction is given in the below table 10.1 we will see here where it is you can see this is table 10.2 this is table 10.1 okay cell reactions they have given batteries for example now nickel okay nioh you can see here different okay nickel iron cell reactions okay and specific energy is 267 we can get here so normal open circuit voltage is also 1.37 volt okay but nickel and this iron batteries it suffers from gassing also suffers from corrosion and self discharge problems okay if it is not even used it will discharge by itself so this problems have been partially or totally solved in different uh, examples or simulations that have yet to reach the market okay these batteries are complex due to the need to maintain the water level and the safe disposal of the hydrogen and oxygen which is released during the discharge process so nickel iron batteries also suffer from low temperatures although less than lead acid batteries finally the cost of nickel is significantly higher than that of lead acid batteries the disadvantage is our high power density compared with lead acid and the capability of withstanding 2000 deep discharges okay so now next one is nickel cadmium system okay nickel or cadmium so it uses the same positive electrode and electrolyte as that of nickel iron system okay so in it uses the combination with metallic cadmium negative electrodes okay and it, nominal open circuit voltage is 1.3 volt so historically the development of the battery has coincided with that of nickel or iron and they have similar performance okay so both these have similar performance so nickel cadmium has enormous technical improvement because of the advantages of high specific power of 228 per kg and a long cycle up to 2000 cycles okay also a high tolerance of electric and mechanical abuse and a small voltage drop over a wide range of discharge currents okay 
so the nickel cadmium battery has some disadvantages which includes high initial cost then also relatively low cell voltage and the carcinogenic carcinogenic carcinogenicity and environmental hazard of cadmium okay this is what hazardous to our environment cadmium so it can be divided into two major categories first one is the vented and second one is the sealed type the vented type consists of many alternatives okay it has a high specific energy but it is more expensive and a sealed nickel cadmium battery incorporates a specific cell design feature to prevent a build up of pressure in the cell which is caused by gassing during overcharging so as a result the battery requires no maintenance this require no maintenance at all so major manufacturers of nickel cadmium battery for electric vehicle and hybrid electric vehicle are SAFT and Varda recent EVs powered by the nickel cadmium battery include the Chrysler TE van the Mazda Roadster Mitsubishi EV and Renault Clio okay next one is nickel metal hydride NIMH battery nickel metal hydride has been on the market since the year 1992 its characteristics are similar to that of nickel cadmium okay so the principal between difference between the nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydride is the use of hydrogen which is absorbed in a metal hydride for the active negative electrode material in place of cadmium okay so because of the superior specific energy when compared to the nickel cadmium and uh, freedom from toxicity or carcinogenicity the nickel metal hydride is superseding the nickel cadmium battery the reaction is given as this one okay so this is your nickel this is your mh mean metal hydride so after combination it will becomes a metal difference and then nickel with hydride okay so when the battery is discharged the metal hydride in the negative electrode is ox oxidized to form a metal alloy okay this one and nickel oxy hydroxide in the positive electrode is, is reduced to nickel hydroxide this one so during the charging the reverse action will occurs in the case of charging it will become like this it has a nominal voltage of 1.2 volt also it gives specific energy of 65 watt hour per kg specific power of 200 watt per kg okay so main the advantage is the key component of this NIMH battery is hydrogen storage metal alloy which is formulated to obtain a metal material that is stable over a large number of cycles okay as we know that this NIMH battery is still under development it has the high specific energy okay and high specific power from 200 to 300 watt per kilo kg okay so this battery still suffers from its high initial cost this is the disadvantage also it may have memory effect and can be exothermic or charge so a uh, number of manufacturers such as general motors ovonic panasonic varta etc these are engaged in the development of this battery okay so uh, vehicles like solo solid electric gt force ev is been using for testing and demonstration of this battery okay next one is lithium based batteries 
so lithium we all know that it is the lightest of all the metals and it presents very interesting characteristics from electrochemical point of view it also allows a very high thermodynamic voltage which gives a very high specific energy and specific power the two major technologies are lithium polymer okay and lithium ion lithium ion is i i think most of the batteries are lithium ion so we will go through that lithium ion batteries so it is announced in the year 1991 so it has seen an unpredictable rise to what is now considered to be the most promising rechargeable battery of the future okay it has the develop it is in the development stage right now but it is used the most extensively because of very high advantages okay so it also gained added acceptance for electric vehicle and hybrid electric vehicle so this battery uses a lithiated carbon intercalation material okay mm -hmm. lixc for negative electrode instead of metallic lithium and a lithiated transition metal intercalation oxide li this one for the positive electrode so electromechanical electrochemical reaction is given as this one so on discharge lithium ions are released from the negative electrode and it migrates via the electrode and it is taken up by positive electrode okay lithium ions so on the charging the process is reversed okay so this name as this name is very complex it is written as c oblique li nio2 or simply called as nickel based lithium ion battery it has a nominal voltage of 4 volt specific energy of 120 watt hour per kg energy density is good 200 watt hour okay and a specific power of 260 watt per kilogram okay so it has the lowest and specific energy is very high lowest cost so many battery manufacturers such as safd gs hitachi panasonic sony varta are actively engaged in the development of lithium ion battery in the start okay itself so the company called as safd reported the development of lithium ion high power batteries for hybrid electric vehicles with a specific energy of 85 watt per kilogram okay and specific power of 1350 watt per kilogram this is very huge they also announced high energy batteries for electric vehicle applications of these specifications okay at 80% state of charge and 150 ampere current okay this is very high okay so now we will stop here for this lecture in the next lecture we are going to see ultra capacitors and how it is work how it works and performance of ultra capacitors and then technologies for ultra capacitors and lastly ultra high speed flywheels okay so do watch this video if you have any doubts you can ask me so till then take care goodbye